Hey SolidWorks users, happy 4th of July. We're celebrating American independence by bringing you this series on model rocket hacking. And I'm your hack, Eric Head. Wait, I'm your hack? Who wrote this script? Was it Steve? Yeah, Steve did. Does he think I'm a hack? All right, all right, let's talk to Steve. Hey SolidWorks users, I'm Eric Haddad, your friendly neighborhood SolidWorks guy. Just coming to you to say happy 4th of July to all you Americans out there. And in my opinion, nothing really celebrates American independence like setting off explosives with your kids. It really is an American tradition that's been handed down from generation to generation. So I've decided to introduce my son to model rocketry, the only way I as an engineer and designer know how, by taking an off-the-shelf model rocket kit, hacking it, making it our own, with the use of SolidWorks 3D printing and a little elbow grease. So let's get started with our three-part series where I'll be showing you how to take a rocket from this to this. In parts one and two of this series, we're gonna take an in-depth look at modeling the plastic components on this rocket. So we'll use mostly essential modeling tools to design a new tailpiece and a new nose cone for the rocket. Then in part three, we'll export our parts for 3D printing, show you a little time-lapse of the print, and then comes to the moment of truth, launch day. Let's do this. I have a new part file started in SolidWorks, and I'm going to be modeling this using the metric system, so let's change our units in the bottom right of the window here. Let's get started modeling a new nose cone for our rocket, starting with the revolve tool. Let's sketch the profile on the front plane. I'll set a dimensioned center line first, and I'm just going to sketch the external outline of the nose cone first, based on measurements I took with calipers from the original nose cone. Now use the Offset Entities Sketch tool to give us a 1.25 millimeter thick wall. And I'll just sketch in my bottom and top connecting lines. Now exit the sketch and let's enter the Revolve tool found in the Feature Command Manager. First select the axis of revolution, our sketched center line. And rather than do a full 360 degree revolve, I'm just going to create half of the nose cone so I can mirror it along with some additional features later on. To do that, we'll just change the direction angle to 180 degrees. And you can toggle the direction of the revolve by clicking on this button with circular arrows. Now let's sketch the outline of our window frame on the front plane. I'll make this a bit of an elliptical shape at 13 millimeters by 11 millimeters and space it 10 millimeters away from the bottom of the nose cone. And set a vertical relation between the ellipse's center point, outer point, and the origin to constrain the sketch. Now I'll use the Offset Entities tool to create a 2.5 millimeter wide frame. Exit the sketch and let's use the extruded boss slash base tool to create the frame. In the property manager, click this drop down under the from section and select surface face plane to select a surface to extrude the sketch from. In this case, the outer surface of our nose cone. And I'll just do a blind extrusion 1.5 millimeters. Notice how the terminating face of the extrusion matches the shape of our nose cone's outer surface. To save some weight and to create a recess for gluing a clear window in, I want to cut away a portion of the inside of the cone. So I'm going to create a new sketch where I am offsetting from the original window frame sketch. I'm also going to offset an ellipse that I'll use later to cut out the window. Enter the extruded cut tool and check out how I can use a single entity from our sketch when creating a feature. I'll select this outer ellipse and notice here in the property manager under selected entities that this operation is only referencing the portion of the sketch that I selected. So let's do an extruded cut from the interface of the nose cone, 0.5 millimeters.
Now enter the fillet tool to soften this window frame a bit. First using a 1.2 millimeter fillet on this outer face of the frame. And then I'll blend the edge where the frame connects to the nose cone with a 0.5 millimeter fillet. Now I'll unhide my sketch from the last cut operation. This time select the smaller ellipse and do an extruded cut through all to punch out the window. And we'll just blend this edge created from the cut with a 0.5 millimeter fillet. You can just right click on one of the edges and click on select loop to apply the fillet to this entire edge. Now we're ready to mirror this, so enter the mirror tool found in the command manager. We'll first select this flat face as our mirror plane, and in this case I'm mirroring the entire body, so just select our body. Ensure the merge solid options is selected, and that's it. Now we need to add a small extrusion to the inside of the nose cone where we will screw in an eye bolt for tying the rubber tether and recovery parachute. So sketching from this bottom face, I'll use the convert entities tool to convert the internal circle. And now sketch a 6.1 millimeter circle and I'll set it to tangent to this converted circle. And we'll create the internal circle where the eye bolt goes. A couple horizontal lines to finish up the outline of our extrusion. And I'll use the trim tool to trim away the portions of the two larger circles that we don't need. On the original nose cone, this extrusion travels all the way up the inside of the cone, which is necessary for the manufacturability of the part but we aren't constrained by a manufacturing process since we're 3D printing these parts, so I'll make this much shorter to save some weight. Let's take a look at a few of the other options in the extrude tool. In the drop-down under From, let's select the Offset option to offset this 1.5 millimeters from its sketch plane, using the Direction button to toggle the desired direction. And in the drop-down under Direction 1, I'm going to select Up to Surface to extrude this up to this internal shelf. And we're good. To wrap up this nose cone design, let's add in some rivet details. Sketching on the front plane, let's change the visibility to hidden lines visible, and I'm just going to sketch in a small half circle that lies in the center of the wall thickness, dimensioning its position and size along the way. Now exit the sketch and let's enter the Revolve tool again to explore another Revolve option. Let's select the appropriate axis of revolution, and I only want a 180 degree revolve that sticks out the outside of the nose cone, but in this case I need to do a mid-plane revolve by selecting that option in the drop-down under Direction 1. So there is our first rivet. I'm going to repeat these operations to create another rivet on the same plane as this one, only further up the nose cone. Now with our two initial rivets, we can do a circular pattern of both. In the drop-down under Linear Pattern, you'll find the Circular Pattern tool. Once in the Property Manager, first select the direction. You can select a circular edge or axis to revolve around. Then adjust the spacing amount and number of instances. Here I'll stick with equal spacing around 360 degrees with 8 instances. And then I'll select the features I want to pattern, either directly in the modeling environment or by selecting them in the History tree. Finally, blend these rivets in with a 0.5 millimeter fillet. With the assistance of this little toolbar that pops up when we stay hovered over our first selected edge to help us select the other 15 edges. There we have our new nose cone. I'll be using the center body tube from our model rocket kit, but I'll go ahead and model it in here to help us visualize the final look of our design. 
Sketching on this external ledge face, I'm going to use Convert Entities to copy over this outer edge of the nose cone. And the thickness of my body is 0.4 millimeters, so I'll use the Offset Entities tool to offset the circle inwards. And we'll just do a simple blind extrusion at 139.9 millimeters, making sure the Merge Result option is unchecked. Now let's wrap up this portion of the series with a few more revolves for the start of our tailpiece. Again, I'll sketch on the front plane, and I'm just going to create the profile sketch of the tailpiece using measurements I took off of the original rocket part. As you'll see, this part will have a slightly tapered internal face and is slightly flared at the bottom of the part. After exiting the sketch, enter the Revolve tool, this time doing a full 360 degree revolve, ensuring the Merge Results option is unchecked. This concludes part one of the series. Stay tuned for part two, where we will continue modeling our new tailpiece for our retro rocket.